some of mm. the time. It's a little weird, but, you know, sometimes it works. Yeah, back to Google Frog and Steel Bloom. Google Frog going for... Okay, Cloaky. Nothing out of the ordinary. Cloaky versus Shield on Trojan Hills. One of the common matches. Both players going for aggressives openings, too. Right and the front section. Look at that. Google Frog actually has this uh, early constructor coming up first. Wow, in this position? That isn't... That's... Surprising, uh, very gutsy. Yeah, definitely a greedy decision. It, uh, it might pay off if Steel Blue forgets to uh, raid them out. Well, I don't think Steel Blue's gonna forget to raid them out. They're getting three, they're getting, it looks like about five bandits coming in. No. One, two. Yeah, five bandits coming in. Two forward mm -hmm. and then three in the back just in case for defense. So Steel Blue is definitely raiding Google Frog out. They're not gonna let Google Frog get away with this for free. I like how Google Frog has split out his scouts. He has one heading down the center, one heading down the right side. Um, whereas Steel Blue sort of consolidated all the scouts down through the central lane. Yeah, now three bandits coming in on the center. Two in the back, though. There's still a decent defense. Unfortunately, not in the best position. They're expecting an attack from the front. Not really expecting an attack from around the back, and it looks like Google Frog might actually run into that. I'm not entirely sure where Google Frog is going to go with, that, with this glaive over here in the southeast. Yeah, there's definitely a squishy spot on the southeastern part of um, Steel Blue's actual position. Mm hmm Anyway, so in the main base... For Ghoul Frog, Steel Blue not able to deal a whole lot of damage. No, definitely going to get Defend pushed way easily way. here. Okay, Steel Blue looks like they're going around the back, though. And Ghoul Frog also going around the back. So they're picking the right choice, which is the common choice. I'm a little surprised that Steel Blue didn't actually build defenses or set up units around the back. Because players mm -hmm. always go around the back. There's never a reason to go around the front unless you know your opponent has the back defended. And you attack the front because you just know that's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like going through the front is the trick play. Yes. But in this case, that's... Well, no one really builds in the back, so no one thinks to go around... I don't think anyone's going to have any reason to go around the front. Like, there's no call for it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Google Frog... Ooh, they need to attack now if they're going to deal any damage. There are Lotuses coming up. Steel Blue building one, about to build a second, while Steel Blue also about to just punch through the back. Trying to strunk push, yeah. Oh, nice. And now actually a flank. Four bandits coming ah, in the front to, to die, and then another four <laughs> bandits going around the back to actually deal damage. So the four bandits to the front, at least being a nice distraction, but Google Frog, they do have radar, right? Oh, they do, but not enough. They don't actually see the bandits going around the back until they oh, have no. actual sight. And Google Frog Commander out in the open, no glaives to really defend it. Three bandits won't be enough against a riot cannon, though. That's right. That's it looks like the this bandits up to the north are probably going to get stopped by the LTs here. Uh, this constructor's put up just in time. Oh, yeah. Well, not really, no, because there's a way around it. There's enough room to go around. Oh, but they're not taking advantage of it. Still Blue losing three bandits for no reason. And Google Frog able to deal damage, able to get rid of one of the LLTs, and, I mean, at the cost of four glaives, but still. Getting rid of a melee structure, not getting rid of energy, though. So at this point, Google Frog not really losing, sorry, Steel Blue not losing much of anything. They can still build up just as well as they could have before. So Google Frog right now, taking a lot of pressure in the front, taking a lot of pressure in the north, but not wavering to either of them. And actually expanding on the hill as well. Holy crap, that's fast. Definitely trying to knock Steel Blue out of the central position. You saw how he lined up so that his uh, glaives could sort of arc their way mm. into that group of bandits. And that worked beautiful. beautifully. Wow, at this point Steel Blue is just wide open up the front. Here we go. Extremely Google open. Google just going to run right through here. I mean, it's not... Google Frog's not going to take advantage of that. They're going to go around the side, which I totally agree with. Yep. Because still Look. around the back, there's nothing. There's a Lotus. That's mm -hmm. it. Against four Glaives. And Steel Blue's not even going to chase him, so these Glaives can come right around, and uh, they just have one LLT to deal with. Yeah, so Steel Blue going for the counterattack instead, and it looks like Steel Blue not actually going for the counterattack, per se. Mm, just <laughs> sort of lining up for it. 300 Reclaim. 300 Reclaim in the center of the map, too. And Google Frog has the back taken, has everything kind of Pretty well consolidated. Yeah, everything's pretty nicely taken care of here. Google Frog taking another center mechs out. Steel Blue at about half economy right now. So not Ooh. in a confident position, that's for sure. We see more and more conjures coming out. Conjure and Glaive, sorry, Rock and Glaive coming out from Google Frog. Steel Blue going for Thug Law Rock or Thug Law Rogue Ball. Interesting. Bit more durable early. composition, but um, I guess the mm, rock. I don't know. I yeah, mean, it's exactly. not bad. It's, the, it's kind of the best choice they have. 
Yeah. But it's still risky. I would agree with that, but the Rockos are going to deal with it pretty easily. The Especially in Google help. Frog's hands. Yeah, the Rogue should help, though. But still, another Glaive coming around the back. This will do nothing. The, the Lotus will take care of it, no problem. Mm -hmm. And Google Frog's commander is remaining a thorn in Steel Blue's side. That's Google nice Frog is too. very much boxed Steel Blue in here. He's got, you can see a couple of Glaives that are just posted out to the west and then the line to the east. Well, the line to the I'm east is about boxed. to be destroyed. They're getting flanked yeah. pretty nicely. They, they're going to have to move in. Right, that's yeah, forcing it looks like they might be lost, but just delaying his expansion out there is a win. Um, I mean, just look at the two oh, yeah. positions right now. Steel Blue is so uh, just sort of jammed in here. It's going to have to try and break out through the center. I just I don't know how well this is going to go against the Rockos. Against the Rockos, I think it'll be fine. There are enough rogues probably to get rid of it. Like, there are some rogues. That's what matters. So the Rockos have a threat. And Steel Blue going around the back, actually successfully getting rid of one of the Raiders. Or one of the Conjurers. Getting rid of a Metal Extractor. So slowing down Google Frog's expansion slightly, but not enough. Steel Blue at plus 10. That's it. That is weak. That is very weak. They're going to have a very hard... They're going to just take the back. Why are they not taking the back? They're so threatened. They're so heavily pressured by those Glaives that they just have no choice. Steel Blue's losing a Constructor down in the southeast. Yeah, that's going to go down in the center as well. Those rogues not even doing enough. The Rockos remain strong enough to deal with this. No bandits coming in either. Yeah, you see a big problem with this composition that Steel Blue has chosen is how slow it is. I mean, he pretty much has to go straight through the center just because how long it takes to travel. And these glazes can give him the runaround. So, I mean, it's not really going to contribute to the defense in any way. He has basically these four bandits in the LLTs mm -hmm. to uh, defend against the glaives. Although the Rockos moved in a bit too close. Oh, oh way too... by the outlaws. Yeah. I guess they must have expected that Steel Blue would continue to retreat, but Steel Blue instead stopped, and the Rockos walked in without noticing. Google Frog with a uh, gunship switch here in the center. Okay, well, that will probably be rapiers, I'm guessing, given the way the game's been going so far. Why would it looks like rapiers. Hmm? It does look like rapiers will be coming. And uh, so that should clean up the shield ball. And, uh, probably wrap up the game, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't see any easy way for Steel Blue to get out of this. The only thing I could think of would be if they went for an air switch and Napalm Bomber, burned out all the Rockos, mm -hmm. and then pulled back in with their composition. Because their composition is good. Apart from the Rockos, the Rockos are the actual only threat. Yeah, so exactly. He just needs pump bandits a or get Napalm Bombers. Yeah, exactly. And really, just a few bandits should do it. You know, just to chase away the Rockos, really. And then you move in with your large. You know, this is a pretty tanky shield ball. There's uh, 2.3k metal in it. I mean. He could do some damage. He just needs to push away these Rockos and uh, not sit here like a fish in a barrel. Yeah, there's Steel Blue is being too afraid of them. I mean, Unfortunately, yeah. there's respecting your opponent's stuff, and then there's just being completely paranoid about it. And I think Steel Blue now is falling to the latter category. Rogues are cleaning up pretty well, like you mentioned, with, with all the splash damage that they have. Yeah, I mean, Rogues have a range advantage, I think. I think Shit. you're right. Yeah, they have, so a pretty, they, they have a significant range advantage, actually. It's about 75 so Elmo. Maybe Maybe they should be at the front of this uh, little moving line then to try and push the Rockos back while he sort of walks the rest of it into the port. Yeah, that would that would work, except for the fact that at this point it's a little late with the Rapiers coming in and no flex AA on the ground for Steel Blue. Yeah, definitely. This uh, commander is unfortunately in a bad position. Yeah, the commander has nothing for... Oh, actually, what does it have? It has Riot Cannon. Good choice, actually. That's going to help a lot against the Rapiers. I mean, not why it was chosen, but still a good choice. <laughs> This is my anti-rapier comm. Although, on the other hand, that's just too many rapiers. No, the anti-rapier comm uses the defender weapon. Uses the missile launcher. Yeah. That's not definitely. what's happening here. <laughs> Steel Blue losing their commander, and with that, most of their economy... Yeah, over half their economy just went down the drain. Like, look at the economic advantage, disadvantage. Steel Blue cannot keep up. Yep, absolutely. It's interesting to see just how much Google Frog has expanded in nine minutes compared to, um, you know, how a lot of other players would have expanded in the same amount of time. Mm hmm. And Steel Blue is really restricted. I mean, you were totally right about how that expansion was simply denied because those glaives mm -hmm. were in the way, but the bandits couldn't split out. And Steel Blue's overly aggressive opening strategy did not pay off. I mean, those five bandits didn't do enough at the start of the game, and yes. they didn't defend in the back. They didn't. I mean, they didn't deal any damage. They didn't break around the back to take the expansion. Mm -hmm. They didn't. Yeah, he really tried to push much. through the front door and was easily uh, pushed away by Google Frog. And then tried to push through the back door and once again was easily pushed away. 
mm -hmm. Google Frog had actually managed to check their locks and replace them recently. <laughs> and with that, we are going to move on to game two and Steel Blue's map suggestions. That's a weird new rule. I'm not sure yeah, why they went for that. Interesting system. It's, it reminds me of Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was playing that recently, <laughs> when I was in Chicago. Oh, fun. Yeah, it was one of the tournaments I signed up for, that and Skullgirls. Oh, cool. Went, How'd you do in the Skullgirls tournament? 1-2 in Skullgirls, since I don't actually know the game very well, and 2-2 two, two in Smash, because there were a lot of people who don't play at all, and I mm -hmm. was able to, I could beat people who had no tournament experience, and I lost to people who had tournament experience. Ah, uh, yeah. Because the netcode is terrible for that game, so I haven't really been practicing that much. Oh, I, interesting. Yeah, the netcode for Skullgirls is brilliant. It's awesome. It's great. Mm -hmm. The netco for Smash Bros. is terrible. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Basically, rollback so, versus input delay. You need rollback in fighting games. You can't really use input uh, delay. Yeah, that makes sense. But Japan doesn't understand that because Japan has really good infrastructure and is tiny. <laughs> ah, so they don't really have to deal with it. No, that's like one or two frames and most people are playing in arcades anyway. Oh. I had no idea. Oh yeah, arcades are huge there. Anyway, I'm just going to get a bit of water, so one sec. Yeah, sure. If you can keep them entertained. Oh. <laughs> I'll do my best. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, it's, I'm curious to see what Steel Blue does in this position. I mean, obviously, he has to pick a map that he's really comfortable with if he's going to have any chance. Uh, I mean, basically, if I'm in the situation, I'm going to be falling back on cheese of some sort and uh, just hope for a lucky win. <laughs> and maybe I can make it happen twice in a row, but... Uh, he just he clearly wasn't able to keep up with Google Frog uh, in the Raider game. Um, he wasn't able to use his mid-game composition well enough to push through uh, to try and take it back either. So he's really going to have to try and do something sneaky, I would imagine, here, if he's going to push through. Alternatively, he might just take his chances on the loser's bracket. But uh, I guess that remains to be seen. All right, so we have Icy Shell. Nice. I'm not a big fan of this map. It's uh, It feels like it's too much for me to handle with just how open it is. I wasn't a big fan, and then I saw how Dancer played it. How and Dancer thought, played it? Yeah, Go Go Dancer. They mm -hmm. went for... They did a masterclass on... Actually, that's something I was planning on doing, is adding a 0K masterclass playlist to my channel just so that people have a set of replays oh. that they can watch that's like, these are the replays you should watch. These are the replays that'll show you how the game, yeah, like, this is how the yeah. game should work. Answer did a master class on defensive play. Like, how huh. you play defensive. Basically what they did is they went in the center, they were on the south side, they went in the center, and then they expanded very quickly towards the, towards the center center, from the south center, mm. and then mm. basically kept just the center defended, like enough defenses, just they didn't have to worry about it. They just had overdrive to the center, to the plus five in the center, and kept that. And in the south center, wow. they just kept everything defended enough that their opponent couldn't get in. And then they expanded to one side, slowly but surely they expanded to one side, and then slowly but surely they expanded to the other side. Oh wow! It was extremely well done. It was like oh, that sounds beautiful. Especially since a game before that, I showed a player on Sands of Time who didn't play defensively well. Like they played mm -hmm. in the corner and just all they were doing was huddling up. They were just yes. turtling and doing nothing, but what Dancer did was basically hold on while they had a massive economic advantage and were stopping their opponent from getting in. I think that mm -hmm. was against, I want to say Young, I can't remember exactly who it was against, but yeah, it was, I think Aquinum actually, and they were just holding the line every time they got attacked, and that was just more reclaim, they kept their economic advantage, they kept everything just in place the way they wanted it. Wow. And then they... Once they had enough forces, they just pushed out and crushed Aquinum. It sounds perfect. Yeah, it's it's really common for um, the higher skill players to rush to the center, sort of put some defenders up, and then, uh, just like you mentioned, expand out towards the sides um, and take control as uh, such bottlenecks as there are on the map. Yeah, we can see Google Frog actually going for exactly that sort of play. We're not sure. I'm not sure if they're going to go for defensive. It looks like they're being quite aggressive, in fact. Especially mm -hmm. since light vehicles versus shield shield need to be kind of careful, especially if light vehicles goes for levelers. Interesting, yeah. And still Blue Definitely has reason not to. At a mobility oh, yeah, disadvantage, I would say, uh, against the Scorchers, though, so especially on a big open map like this. I wonder what the reason is for choosing uh, shield bots. I mean, it looks like he just 
uh, yeah, really is going to be rushing the center and then probably defending it, like you mentioned. So it's a nice defensive factory. Oh, yeah. I think that's Russian probably instance, what it is. I mean, it's a solid factory. It's just yeah, that absolutely. vehicle, the vehicle light bot, or the vehicle shield bot matchup is, I think, slightly skewed in favor of vehicles. I think it's like 5.5, 4.5 in favor of vehicles. It's very slight skew. But the levelers, because they stop the shield ball, means that it's kind of tricky to deal with. I mean, they're stopped by rogues. So it's not like it's completely unbeatable. It just requires that you build a few more rogues than you normally would. Mm -hmm. So it's a little tricky. But then slashers do nothing. True. So it's it's a trade-off there. Levels are tricky. awesome. Slashers do nothing. Dominatrices are surprisingly useful in large enough numbers. <laughs> but then bandits kill those. So. That's a good point. I'm not sure if you caught it, but... Uh... Google Frog just cleared out Steel Blue's three uh, base mechs with one bandit. Yeah, I caught so, that. I got that on video. Excellent. That was a nice shot. Was, Beautiful. Of course, at this point, Steel Blue's expanded to the point that it doesn't matter as much, but that was still a really good shot. That was a good play. Notice how Google Frog is pumping energy into the super mechs here, uh, trying to overdrive it as quickly as possible. Yep. Yeah, that's what, that's what everyone does. And I'm a bit surprised they aren't trying to set up an overdrive line to the rest of their mechs, but they look like they just want to have that center mechs. Because actually what happened in the Dancer game is Dancer terraformed that mechs up way up high mm -hmm. so that nothing could get to it. Sure. And also, this is one of the reasons to go for shield. I mean, Google Frog's using their commander, but when you go for bots on this map, you can take the center without having to worry about elevation changes. Steel Blue exactly. cannot take the center without their commander. Yes. And they can't attack it at all without Wolverines or Impalers. Yep. Hmm. So that's a very secure position. And especially with all the solar collectors nearby, the Wolverines will do nothing. They need to have a direct hit do anything, and that's not going to happen easily. Oh, that's true. Like, Impalers would be fine, but no one builds Impalers. So mm -hmm. I don't think Google Frog's going to worry about that. So yeah, Overdrive and Defense. At this point, it's well, still plus 5 due to lack of energy. But if Google Frog that's gets really, a few more power plants... Ooh, very nice raid. So yeah, Google Frog not playing defensive. They're playing aggressive, just taking the center first. Yep. Raider heavy. Nice, and having control of the center, even though he has the slower Raiders, because he can move his Raiders through the center, I think he might actually end up having more mobility than Steel Blue, especially after he uh, sets up some defenses on these bottlenecks. Mm hmm Now, the levelers are up, so that's going to be a problem for most of Shield Bot. I don't see any rogues being built up yet. Bandit's still going. I guess Google Frog's going to rely entirely on position. I mean, they just took out everything Steel Blue had economically again. So I don't think they have much to worry about. Now, Google Frog just needs energy to overdrive with, and at that point, they'll be in a really good spot. Unfortunately, their commander... Ooh, that is a bad place to be. Getting rid of that one scorcher, nice. but still. Yeah, that was... That was not a place you'd want to be. However, how many levelers are there? There's two levelers, and one of them is actually under production, so at this point, the bandits basically have free reign. Yeah, this is uh, potentially a game-ending group of bandits. Uh, it looks like no, they it's not going to end the game. Quickly. It's not, it's not going to do it. If they went for the leveler first and then took out the slasher, they might. But because they were going past it, they were trying to bypass it and they didn't have the speed yeah. to do so. That's not going to work right now. But I yeah, actually agree more with running around it rather than trying to take it on directly. With I, raiders. I don't know. I mean, it's just this, it's the speed question. It's like yeah, exactly. Google Frog couldn't run around it. They were trying to, but then there was, was too close. much in the way. And mm -hmm. it was coming too fast behind them. And he is getting pushed back here. Yeah, I think, well, obviously, that was the right call to just retreat. I mean, Google Frog is in such a good position now. He can just develop it and then uh, wait to steamroll Steel Blue in a little bit. Yeah, I. the only thing I would say is Steel Blue is clearly going for more levelers. So I'd go for, I'd mix a few rogues in. I have Definitely. like a three to one ratio of bandits to rogues. Mm -hmm. I think that'd probably be a good ratio. Just to, just have that extra bit of support so the levelers don't get everything for free. Wow, it's so interesting to see. Google Frog was so invested in the central position. He built a caretaker almost immediately after he built a few, uh, few solar collectors to help build up the mm -hmm. defense around it. And build up <laughs> more solar collectors too. as well. Yeah, that's something I'm... Well, at least I'm not trying to get reclaim off of it. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if Google Frog tries to build caretakers before getting reclaim. I've noticed Aquinum does that a lot. But I don't know there if is. other players do... Most of the players I notice tend to build, tend to reclaim with workers, so I don't think the caretaker is being used for reclaim. It's actually, I don't think can, come to think of it. Where's the reclaim range? 
I cannot see the range of this thing. I have no idea how big its range is. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Well, we are seeing the rogues come out oh, now. Oh, there so I can see it. Should yeah. have an easier time with these levelers, hopefully. Yeah, like seven rogues being emergency built. So that'll help. That'll get rid of the slashers. That'll get rid of the levelers. Wolverines are up, which is not at all surprising. Even though, like I said, with Wolverines against this particular position, it's okay. I mean, Impalers, it's more just Impalers are expensive. But they would be the better option overall. Not that Steel Blue knows this, that's the thing. Steel Blue doesn't really know how well defended the area is. If they knew, I think they'd probably get a few Wolverines to take care of the Stingers, and then get a bunch of Impalers to get rid of the Metal Extractor and everything else. But the cost, that is prohibitive. Yeah, it's... Not in a very good position to build any of that, really. Not in he's a very good position to, to build anything. Look at their economy. <laughs> he's trying to do what he can. He, he was trying to creep out east here, but I think he was slowed down too much by all of, all of these defenders. I'm not sure they were necessary. Uh, well, it's kind of... They're kind of guessing on what Google Frog is going to do. Mm -hmm. But Google Frog is making it very clear their intention is to hit the main base. They're not yeah. going for the periphery. The Google Frog's confident they can just win. So yeah, the defenders in that case aren't necessary, but it's, it really is a mind game. Like, Steel Blue, I think, is just getting panicked. Definitely. That's, that's what's happening. Feeling a little boxed in. Yeah, because at this point, they don't see much. Like, if you, They don't even have a radar, do they? Oh, they do. They have some radar, so they know what's going on in the center. But they don't know what's going on behind that. For all they know, Google Frog's taken their entire half of the map and has three times the economy rather than just double the economy. But Steel Blue is... Why are they patrolling with their commander? Okay, for some reason the commander is sort of walking around not building to the southeast, which is awkward. I don't know why oh, that's weird. happening. I think Steel Blue is just... Okay, they just missed it. They were leaving it idle. That was merely a mechanical failure. A bit surprised they didn't set up the build order sooner, but that was... That was that. So Steel Blue is being pushed back so hard, I don't think they really have much of an answer. And this is another no. reason why bots are handy. Because the crater fields. Like at this oh yeah, that's a good point. At this point, there's only a couple spots, like a couple oh, map wow. pixels where the bots cannot path. Those and the craters vehicles, are very deep. Actually, yeah, much deeper than I thought. But the bots have no problems. The vehicles, mm -hmm. on the other hand, they're they have tons of choke points that they've created for themselves. Wow. Because this map I is didn't soft. That. Oh yeah, this map's pretty soft. And now Google Frog does go over the defenders, and they do no good. The thugs just go through them like they weren't there. <laughs> I don't think they even took... Did they, no, the thugs have taken no permanent damage from the defenders. Entirely shield damage. So well, that... That was a bit of a shame. Oh well. <laughs> defenders are a little bit of a risky thing, especially at the stage of the game where your opponent has gone thug. Because hmm. at this point, it looks like the western side is a distraction. Google Frog is going to take out the spread free. Going to take out the commander, too. Ooh, it's gonna be a little bit difficult though. The commander, come on, kill the commander. It's not too hard. <laughs> Just shoot it. Just shoot they'll it. Eventually, they'll get around to it. Actually, the thugs are blocking each other. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't really matter. At this point, Google Frog has the entire map. They have three times the economy easily. They have. Like, they've got nothing really working against them. And like I said, they can pass through the craters as if they weren't there. Like, that's not stopping them. Google Frog's uh, endgame is actually just to push Stingers straight into Steel Blue's base, it looks like. Okay, that's just style points. <laughs> that's purely style points. What the? Oh, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> so Wolverines a were a little there. bit too much. But at least the Stinger's up. But yeah, how many Wolverines are? Okay, there's almost a dozen Wolverines. Like, ten Wolverines have been built. Yeah, those can be scary. Because Claws... Oh. Okay, bomblets deal... What's the damage on them? Okay, I don't know what the damage is in these things. I'll check the Wolverine stats. The damage is not listed here either. It does not auto-generate damage for the claw projectile. That sucks. Bummer. Yeah, so I don't know what... I'd have to see what the actual bomblets are. Well, at any rate, this is death. Google Frog has... It's They've gone far enough. We'll take out the factory, and then it'll be over. In fact, I'm surprised that Steel Blue's still holding on. Tenacious, no doubt. Big swarm of levelers coming in here. They might 
do all right against these thugs. If they, uh, especially no. if they can box them into a corner. No. The factory is gone. There's, I mean, there are a few levelers that you're right, but there are probably enough Rockos that's not a big deal. This has actually become a pretty common composition. I've seen the uh, Wolverine leveler combo. It's pretty popular too. I don't. Uh, I've tried it myself. I haven't had much success, but I guess between the right and then the uh, range and guaranteed hit for the uh, Wolverine clock is a nice combination. Yeah. Not enough here, unfortunately. Well, that was game two. Yeah, that that was that was Steel Blue. Yeah, okay, and they just quit on me. Darn it, game! Don't do that. So Steel Blue can is into losers against Exploit. Google Frog moves on to fight Drone, and Acronym and Snuggle Base will be having to fight to fight Felthos to then fight the winner of Exploit and Steel Blue. To then fight whoever loses between Drone and Google Frog. Ow. We're moving on to winner's finals. Hooray! Um, very excited for this next game. 